in today's artificial intelligence class we will see the second part of uh, augmented grammars and semantic interpretation from fourth unit natural language for communication so here we will see the semantic interpretation under this topic we will see the compositional semantics past tree semantics for english and inductive logic programming that is ilp so after that uh, the continuation we will see the complications under this the time and tense quantifications uh, long distance dependencies ambiguity and disambiguity so these are the topics we will see in today's class semantic interpretation semantic interpretation means adding semantics to a grammar for example uh, here a grammar for arithmetic expression arithmetic expression grammar rules are given uh, augmented with the semantics here each variable x i represent a semantic for a constituent see x are given here okay those are semantics for a constituent and each rule is augmented with variable indicating the semantic interpretation of the phrase in this rule the semantic of digit such as 3 3 is nothing but digit itself uh, the digit will be represented by its own number and the semantic of expression such as 3 plus 4 that means the operator plus will be applied to semantic of phrase 3 and phrase 4 right so this is operator plus symbol and the rules obey the principle of compositional semantics that is the semantic of phrase is a function of semantic of subphrases. Parse tree with the semantic interpretation of the given string 3 plus 4 divided by 2. Here, uh, the rules for uh, numerical expressions, rules for numerical expression, and this is the equivalent parse tree for the given numerical expression that is 3 plus 4 divided by 2. And if we apply top-down approach, we have to start with the starting state expression and finally we reach this particular given string that is here in the bottom side, then this is called as top-down approach. Suppose if it is bottom-up approach, we will start from the given expression and finally we will reach the starting uh, symbol that is expression, right? In both the way, we have to reach the uh, final given expression then the expression will be accepted by the grammar by the grammar right next let us move to semantic of english uh, for this the example sentence is john loves mary and for this english sentence the equivalent logical sentence is loves of john comma mary here john is loan phrase and when come to verb phrase, loves Mary will come. Okay, loves Mary will come for verb phrase. And this is a predicate which combines the term that represent the person yields. Which person yields here? John. John is a hidden word here. Okay, a complete logical sentence. That means loves Mary means who loves Mary? John loves Mary. So, loves Mary is a predicate that means lambda x loves of x comma Mary. Okay. So, uh, this x is hidden here. Hidden here. Okay. When come to noun phrase, the semantic object followed by verb phrase with the semantic predicate which yields a sentence whose semantic is the result of applying predicate to the object. For example, S of predicate of object which implies noun phrase of object followed by verb phrase of predicate. Okay, this is the given rule here. And the semantic interpretation of John loves Mary is lambda x loves of x comma Mary then John. That means this x will be substituted by John. That means we can substitute any of the object in the place of x, okay, which is equivalent to the logical term 
John loves of John comma Mary, right? Here the verb phrases are predicate. That is the verb loves uh, is represented by lambda y lambda x loves of x comma y. Okay, the uh, it predicates when given argument Mary returns the predicate of lambda x loves x comma Mary. So now in the place of Mary we substitute another verb called y. So this uh, figure represent the grammar that derives semantic representation of the sentence La John loves Mary. Okay, John loves Mary. Here yes of predicate of object which implies noun of object verb of predicate verb of predicate of object which implies verb of predicate and noun phrase of object and noun phrase of object which implies noun of name of object right name of john which implies john and name of mary which implies mary and verb of lambda y lambda x loves x comma y is loves okay loves is verb right here uh, the bold words are the terminal symbol and all the others are non-terminal symbols and this is the past tree with the semantic representation of the string john loves mary okay here first we have to convert this english sentence into logical equivalent okay s of loves comma loves of john comma mary and after applying each rule one by one and finally we will get the result that is uh, the terminal symbol uh, that is the original words at the terminal symbol. The next is inductive logic programming sir. that is ILP. These programs will learn the grammar from the examples. From the given example it will learn the grammar and it will specialize the parser of that grammar. Okay, so this is what the inductive logic programming. Here the target domain is natural language database queries okay natural language database queries that is the questions normal english questions right here the training example consists of a pairs of uh, word string and the corresponding semantic form okay this is what the example from this example only the program will learn that is the inductive logic program will learn the grammar and it will specialize the parser so the example which consists of a pair of uh, word string as well as the corresponding semantic forms. For example, what is the capital of state with the largest population? Okay, this is normal English question. So, from this um, it will learn the answer of C comma capital of S comma C and largest of P comma states of S and population of S comma P. Here, C is nothing but capital, S is nothing but state and P is nothing but population. Population, okay. See, this is what the inductive learning program will learn the grammar, right. Complications. Here, the grammar of real English is endlessly complex. That means the grammar of formal languages, okay. Grammar of Formal language is very easy when compared to the grammar of natural language. Okay, so English is a natural language. Uh, for example, for formal language, uh, C, C++, Java. Okay, so these are all uh, formal languages. Okay, so here formal language grammar is very easy when compared to natural language grammar. Okay. English is also a natural language, so the grammar is very, very, very difficult one um, because we are having a separate um, terms for indicating time and sense. For example, present tense, past tense, future tense, today, tomorrow, etc. Okay, so these are all uh, words used to, to indicate time and tense. Next one is quantification. So, to indicate quantification, we are having many words in English, all, few, some, many, lot, huge. So, these are some of the words to indicate the quantification, okay, how much, like wait. 
and next one is pragmatic pragmatic is nothing but the realistic or uh, practical truth okay so to explain some uh, truth of a sentence or to explain the current situation truth of the current situation we have to use some different terms and long distance dependencies here uh, we are having some different terms and ambiguity so when come to ambiguity there are four different uh, categories are there lexical ambiguity syntactic ambiguity semantic ambiguity and metaphor so these are four different ambiguity when come to disambiguation here the world model mental model language model and acoustic model so these four will come under disambiguation so let us see all those things one by one time and sense here let us take one example john loves mary and john loved mary so this is the first sentence this is the second sentence so this is the present tense and this is past tense past tense so how we identify the present tense and past tense because of this ver verb okay so english uses verb tense that is present past and future to indicate the relative time of the event okay there is no such things in our formal language grammar and the event calculus notation is used to represent time of the event okay see for indicating the time of the event we have to use different uh, uh, different words for the verb okay because of that we can indicate when that particular event occurred let us see one example for this first one is john loves mary we will take the same example uh, this is the uh, present tense present tense isn't it okay now this is e1 first sentence let us take that belongs to loves of john comma mary and during now comma extend of e1 okay here the during uh, used to indicate present tense okay now uh, let us take the second sentence loud this is past tense this is past tense isn't it so we have to use another sentence that belongs to loves of john comma mary and after okay after of now comma extent of e2 okay after which word indicates past tense okay so this suggests that our two lexical rules this is the first rule this is the second rule for the word loves and loved should be of this okay the first one is verb lambda x uh, sorry lambda y lambda x e belongs to loves of x comma y during of now comma e okay so this indicates present tense why because we are using during the uh, during word here and the next one is the past tense because here we are using after keyword hence this is the past tense okay so this is how we have to include um, the additional words to indicate time and tense the next one is quantification here the sentence every agent feels a breeze okay this is the given english sentence but this sentence is semantically ambiguous that is it will give two different meaning the first one is for every agent there exists a breeze that the agent feels okay this is the first meaning and the alternative meaning is there exists a breeze that every agent feels okay so the system will get confused which meaning it will accept so for the given sentence every agent feels a breeze here two uh, semantically interpretation sentences the first one is for all a a belongs to agent which implies there exist b b belongs to breeze and there exist e 
E belongs to feel of A comma B and during now comma E. Okay. So, during now comma E means present tense. Present tense that is for every agent, for all the agent. Okay. There exist breeze. See there exist breeze that the agent feels. That the agent feels. Okay. So, this is what semantically interpretation sentence uh, for this particular first one. And this is the second sentence. There exist breeze. B belongs to breeze for all A. A belongs to agent which implies there exist E. E belongs to feel of A comma B and during now comma E. This is also present tense. Right. So, here there exist breeze. There exist breeze V breeze that every agent feels okay every agent means all the agent all the agent feels the breeze okay so this is present tense the next one is pragmatics pragmatics is to explain the real situation see for this let us see the indexials it is a phrase that directly refers to the current situation Right. Let us see one example for this. I am in Boston today. This is a city. Okay. Here I and today are indexials. Okay. That is I, the word I that represent the fluent speaker and I is not considered a part of grammar but it is an issue of pragmatics. That is the context of current situation to understand easily. See for this purpose we can use indexials. A speaker will give some information to the hearer, second party. Okay? So, by using some speech act. Now, uh, the hearer have to understand what type of action it is. That means what type of speech act it is. It may be a question, a statement, a promise, a warning or a command and so on. Okay, it may be anything. But the hearer have to understand that properly. For example, a command uh, such as go to 2 comma 2. That means who have to go there? This of course the hearer. Okay, so the hearer should understand the statement clearly. A command can be formed uh, from the verb phrase, right, where the subject is implicitly the hearer, okay. The subject understand, that is indirectly understand that is hearer, okay. To distinguish command from the statement, which one is command, which one is statement, okay. So that alter the rules for yes to include the type of speech act, okay. Uh, the first one is a statement that is yes of statement of speaker comma predicate of object which implies noun phrase of object followed by verb phrase of predicate. So, if we include the noun phrase of object here then this is called a statement. Okay? When it will become command if there is no such object here. Okay, that means the statement will become command, S of command of speaker, comma, predicate of hearer, predicate of hearer. Okay, hearer means object. Okay, and the subject is indirectly uh, comes here. We understand that subject will come here. Okay, so this is called as command. See, if it is common, there will not be any subject here. Only the verb phrase uh, of predicate will come here. The next one is long distance dependencies. Here, the question introduced a new grammatical complexity. The question is, who did the agent tell you to give the gold to? That is, the final word is to that should be passed as pp to uh, blank space. That is gap. Okay. So, the noun phrase is missing here. Okay, That is, the missing noun phrase is licensed by the first word of the sentence who. 
okay this particular who that is the complex system of augmentation is used to, to make sure that the missing noun phrase match up with the licensing word in just, just to the right way and the prohibit gap in the wrong places right uh, that means the noun phrase uh, there should not be any gap but when come to web, web phrase the gap should be acceptable okay let us see one example for this what did he play okay noun phrase delhi and gap that is what did he play delhi and yeah who okay so this is ungrammatical this is this sentence is completely wrong grammatically wrong but uh, if the same gap will be come in verb phrase yeah now the sentence will give some meaning that is what did you smell and shoot arrow at okay what did you smell and shoot arrow at so smell is verb phrase and shoot arrow at is also web phrase here followed by one gap but we can assume and understand the meaning of this sentence right the next one is ambiguity ambiguity means um, more number of meaning for the same sentence here are some examples taken from news headlines see some examples are here and the meaning will be understand only by the native speaker but this is somewhat difficult for the people who are new to English. There are four types of ambiguity. First one is lexical, syntactic and semantic and last one is metaphor. Metaphor means uh, symbols are images. Okay. So, a single word give more meaning then this is called as lexical ambiguity. Here these two are if the same sentence may give more than one meaning then this may be a syntactic or semantic ambiguity when the symbol or image will give more number of meaning then this is called as metaphor ambiguity the first one is lexical ambiguity lexical ambiguity means a word which has more than one meaning then this is called as lexical ambiguity let us take one example that is back okay if it is um, that is based on the place of this word back the meaning will get changed okay if it is an adverb then the meaning will be go back if it is an adjective then back door noun means back of the room room is uh, noun and if it is a verb then back up your files so based on the place of this word the meaning will get changed so this is a lexical ambiguity let us take another word called jack okay it can be name or noun okay if it is a name or noun then playing a card that is jack the 11th card and it may be a fish or socket or a device for raising heavy objects so jack will be um, will have these meanings when it comes noun but when it comes to verb that is to jack up a car to hunt with a light to hit a baseball hard so for all these things uh, we will get different meaning for the same word jack the second one is syntactic ambiguity it refers a phrase that has multiple phrases refers a single phrase that has multiple phrases for example let us take one sentence i smelled a wampus in 2 comma 2 okay which has two phrases Okay, one where the proportional phrase in 2 comma 2 which modifies the noun and another one is modifies the verb. That means from here we can understand I smelled a wampus in 2 comma 2 means whether I am in 2 comma 2 or wampus is in 2 comma 2. Okay, so the same sentence will give two meaning. So this is called a syntactic ambiguity. The third one is semantic ambiguity that is the syntactic ambiguity leads to a semantic ambiguity. Okay, let us take the same sentence I smelled a wampus in 2 comma 2. Okay, here one phrase means the wampus is in 2 comma 2 and another phrase is a snatch is in 2 comma 2. Okay, so the meaning is not clear in this sentence. So this may cause a deadly mistake for the agent, right? 
the fourth one is uh, metaphor ambiguity metaphor is a figure of speech or some image of speech in which a phrase with one literal meaning is used to, to suggest a different meaning by the way of analogy okay so the same sentence can be used for some different purpose then this is called as metaphor ambiguity disambiguation disambiguation means the process of requiring the most probable intended meaning of the word that is hidden meaning of the word hidden meaning of the word okay so to disambiguate properly we need to combine four models the first model is the word model word model means the likelihood that a proposition occurs in the word okay let us see one example for this so that we can easily understand the word i am dead i am dead means i am in very big trouble okay this is not like i am that is my life ended but still i am speaking okay i am dead means i am in very big trouble there is no other meaning for this i am dead the second one is uh, mental model uh, mental model means the speaker that is the first party forms the intention of communicating a certain fact to the hearer that is the second party okay that means this approach combines the model of what the speaker believes and what the speaker believes that the hearer believes second one okay and so on this is important for the mental model let us see one example for this the speaker uh, told that i am not a crook i am not a crook now we understand the meaning of this crook that is 50% probability gives crook means criminal and 99.9% gives the meaning gives this is a staff here i am not a crook means we have to take only this particular meaning i am not a criminal okay the third one is language model that is the likelihood of certain string of words will be chosen given that speaker has intention of communicating certain facts so for explaining certain fact the speaker will select some of the words okay these words are called as language model so based on the particular language they will select the words for communicating certain fact and the last one is acoustic model here this is the likelihood for uh, spoken communication for a particular sequence of sound will be generated okay so given that the speaker has chosen given string of words so how the words will get pronounced accordingly the meaning will get uh, meaning will be understood that is called as acoustic model so far we have seen the semantic interpretation this is the second part of uh, uh, the previous class augmented grammar and uh, semantic interpretation from fourth unit natural language for communication so in this class we have seen the semantic interpretation and uh, complications under semantic interpretation uh, we learned uh, the computational semantics part 3 semantics of uh, english and the inductive logic programming that is ilp when come to complication we have seen time and sense quantification long distance dependencies ambiguity and disambiguation okay this is one of the important topic from fourth unit definitely you can expect one question from this topic either it may be five mark question or 10 mark question right so in the next class we will see another important topic from fourth unit thank you